Okay, so many people have been asking for a library for these uh, cheap 5 pin or 5 wire um, unipole step motors that uh, I got off eBay and I showed you how to get a sketch to make them work but um, I guess everyone wanted a library so I've uh, gone ahead and well, wrote, written um, a library and uh, I'm just going to show you, well I'm not going to go through how to make the library but I'm going to show uh, how it can be used to control uh, multiple um, step motors. So I've got two here. I've just written a, a quick sketch, and you can see it's it's controlling both of those step motors at the same time. So I'll jump onto the computer and show you how to uh, write some code, and then um, feel free to download the library and play. Okay, first things first, you can need to go to my website, crazy-logic.co.uk go to the projects, computing, Arduino Uni step, and then you can download the library here. Uh, it's a zip folder, so if you open the zip folder, in it you'll find a, another folder. Copy this folder, and you'll need to put this into your default library's location. So for myself, that is in, uh, well, it's in users map documents Arduino libraries. And as you can see, I've already got a copy of it in here, so, but you would normally just paste it in in like so, if I just overwrite this, skip, 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 because they're the same files. And in there, you'll find three files keywords.txt, unistep.cpp, and unistep.h. These three files are the uh, the library themselves. So, uh, actually, if I quickly go through the, um, the files and explain how they work, um, that's that one that one and that one. Let's do the easy one first, the keywords. So this basically changes the colour within the uh, Arduino sketch um, depending on, on keywords, keyword 1, keyword 2, keyword 2. These are just the, the three, well they're the three functions that you can call from the Arduino within this library. Um, and then unistep.h is sort of defining what the library actually is. So up here we have our um, public stuff, so this is the bits that you can actually call. And then within the actual library itself, so in each instance, or yeah, in each instance of calling the library, all of these variables and these functions all exist. Um, and this basically will allow you to set up multiple unistep or unistepper motors, and you can uh, operate them independently. Um, and the, the bulk of the work actually happens in unistep.cpp. Uh, let's go from the bottom up. Um, because that makes more sense. So unistep print basically just prints the current step of the uh, the motor. This is uh, within the whole of the revolutions. So if you've got a uh, 4096 um, possible steps within one revolution, it prints the current step that the motor is on, which is going to be quite useful, I think, for if you need to do some calculations. Then we have eight go-to steps. So zero indexed zero to seven, and these just write the pins high or low depending on uh, which state of our step motor they are. So if you look at my previous video there was eight possible um, states within this state machine so these are just little functions that write the, the pins high or low depending on which um, which state machine it should be. Um, and then the two main uh, functions within the library, so you can't call these directly but these are within the library, so step 0 and step 1 which basically is a step clockwise or a step anti-clockwise. Um, so it uses the current phase. Um, so remember there's there's eight possible state machines, or eight possible states of the state machine. Each one of those has got a, a phase, so zero to seven. And then basically, the only difference between these two is the direction. So in this direction, step one, we go zero to one, and then if it's one, we go to two, if it's two, we go to three. And in the opposite direction, if it was 0, we go to 7, if it's 1, we go to 0, if it's 2, we go to 1, if it's 3, we go to 2, etc, etc. So that just basically steps the motor by one step in either direction. And there's two step, or well, step 0 and step 1 for either direction. Then we have a function which brings those together, which is the moves function. Now this is the one that's externally uh, accessible, and basically it takes two input variables, so the amount of steps and the direction and it loops through depending on the direction it either calls step one or step well, step one or step zero depending on the direction and it basically calls the steps that amount of times and puts a little uh, 
delay in between the steps because you need the delay of what's going to work and that's how it controls the, the steps forwards and backwards and then the, the, the first bit is when you call it so when you define it you need to define your four pins that you're, you're outputting to um, the amount of steps in one whole revolution um, it's not strictly necessary but I've put it in because it's going to be quite useful for feedback and then the delay between steps quite important I'm using the default 900 any less than 900 and I find that it jumps steps and doesn't really work uh, and all this does is it basically takes these external variables, makes them internal variables within the uh, each instance of the library that's called, um, and then it sets up our pins for output, sets our phase initially to zero and our current step to zero, and then it just moves again, moves those variables into internal variables. And that is the library in a nutshell. So the next thing I need to show you is how to actually write from scratch a program that uses this library uh, and we will do that now. Okay, so the next thing to do is just open up uh, the Arduino IDE and we'll start with a new script, new sketch. So the first thing we do is we're going to include the um, the library uh, and we do that using uh, or hash include uh, and then it's uh, square brackets or uh, greater than less than ends and then unistep dot h and then we uh, close those um, and then next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a stepper instance and we do this by um, calling unistep so that's the uh, the name of the, the library and it's gone see it's gone sort of orange or light brown that's because it's one of our keywords uh, I'm going to call it stepper one because I'm not very creative and step one is on pins 8, 9, 10, 11 it's got 4096 revolutions per turn or steps per uh, steps per one revolution sorry and we're using a delay time of 900 um, so that there has just created um, well it's created step one uh, I don't really know what the, the right term for that is but we'll just use that um, and then we're going to be using serial to control this so, um, so for serial and then we need to define an int which is the incoming um, byte which is how it's written in uh, another sketch so we're just going to leave that there and then we need to call our setup uh, which is a normal normal thing for Arduino so and in the setup we're going to do serial dot begin uh, and we're going to do 9600 which is the, just the default and then the next we're going to do is our main loop so void uh, loop and this is where our code's going to go so we, what we want to do is we want to rotate the step motor either clockwise or anti-clockwise doesn't really matter which direction based upon um, a serial um, command or we're just going to use a character so we're going to go if uh, serial dot available. I don't know if I could spell a i l a b l e. Yeah. Um, if we if that's greater than zero, this basically means that we've received some serial. So we're going to do something. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if the uh, incoming byte. Um, if the incoming byte is equal to, and then we're going to use a character, so we can do a character for this. So we're going to go, I don't know, right maybe. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can use anything, uh, capitals or lowercase, uppercase, does matter. Um, so if it's this, then we're going to do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to go step or one, um, and we're going to go moves. And then we're gonna we've got to give it two variables. We need two integer variables. So the amount of steps. So we're gonna go two thousand steps, which is roughly half, and direction one. Again, it doesn't really matter at this exact moment. Um, we'll just do it like that. Um, and then we will also say let's go there. If the incoming byte um, equals left. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite. So stepper one dot moves, 
um, so we'll stick with the 2000 but we'll change the direction to zero and close that um, and that basically is a sketch so we will verify what have I spelled wrong serial should be a capital S yeah capital S uh, verify let's make sure it compiles which I think it will do um, done compiling great so we'll upload that I've got my Arduino um, plugged in and it's an Uno brilliant so if we now launch serial monitor we can either send it a left or a right so left oh, left All right. Nope. Why is it not working? Ah, I've just spotted it. So uh, I forgot to do something. So if if there is serial available, we need to actually read the serial. Uh, that's quite important because otherwise it just won't work. Uh, which is why it didn't work just then. Um, so we need to go incoming um, byte is equal to siri C -R -I -L, dot read um, and this actually moves the, the value that's coming into this um, this thing so we can actually use it right so let's verify this now uh, it should work hopefully this time and then yeah so we'll upload this again this time it will or it will work uh, I forgot that line that was quite an important line last time so we'll just put that in and we'll look serial monitor. So we can go left or we can go right. And now it works. Brilliant. So we've got left and right motion. So the great thing about having libraries is that, um, oh actually I should close that. Close that. The great thing about having libraries is that we can quite easily add a second step motor without having to recreate lots of code. So we can just literally copy and paste and then change some numbers. So I've got another step motor uh, on four, five, six, and seven. The same step motor, well, no, different step motor at the same time. So uh, I'm going to, need to call that stepper two. And now what we can do is, again, we can copy and paste. Um, I'm going to want two of these. So now we're going to do left, right, up, and down. So U and D. I need to change this to a, a two because we want this to control our second step rotor. Um, so it moves again, and then I need to change one of these directions to a one and one to a zero. So now we've got four different inputs that do four different things on the two step rotors. So one in either direction, um, and we can now upload that again. And when it's finished doing serial monitor. Do one hour. So now we can do up, down, left, and right, and it will control the two step motors uh, independently. So that's quite useful. Um, and the last thing that this library can do is we can actually read the value of the um, the, the current um, step within all of the revolutions. So we did a print function within within the library. So what I'll do for this one up here is I'll show you that we can uh, do a print. So serial dot um, print, and then we'll do print line actually, and it's stepper stepper one dot print. Uh, so stepper one dot print prints the current value. Oh, I don't need to do close then that one. Um, so stepper one dot print prints the value or returns the value of the current position of the step motor and then serial print will print that out so we'll copy and paste this again down so one for this one um, let's keep the code relatively tidy and then we'll do the same for this one and I need to change these in a moment to um, so this is stepper 2 and this is stepper 2 so literally just changing those those numbers and I'll upload that again so now what this should do is after it's finished moving it should return in serial or to the serial to the serial monitor the current position so let's just go up 
and then when it's finished it returns 2000 which is handy because that's the amount we did now this is modular so if we do that again we should get 4000 and if we do it again we won't get 6000 we'll get 1904 uh, and that is because there's 4096 in a revolution so when you get to that 4096 is equivalent to zero and therefore 4097 is equated to one so that's uh, some some modular maths anyway so this will do the same so up down left right it will do after each one it will return the value of that stepper motor so not necessarily both but we could quite easily um, write some codes that it returns an XY Cartesian uh, grid reference, which could be quite useful, um, which well actually will be useful in one of my later projects. So that's how we can use this library. I will upload this code as an example. Um, actually, I'll probably should save it in a minute. Um, and that's how you can use this library to to get the full power out of these really, really, really cheap step motors. As I say, I've got five of these for five pounds with the little driver boards. So they're going to be very useful in some um, projects I've got lined up that if I ever get around to doing. Um, I hope this has been informative. I hope that it's useful. Please uh, like the video if, if it's if it's useful. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos and all that kind of stuff. And get me on Facebook uh, and have a look at the website as well. And there's not a lot on there at the moment, but it will be getting better. Anyway, cheers.